early, so. All right, today we're gonna to take a look at this uh, Singer Simple. A friend of mine, uh, his wife, just got it out of the box, wasn't able to use it. It was gathering um, a bunch of thread on the bottom as she sewed. And I, I get that common, that same, that same message from a lot of different people, how you stop that. So we're gonna take a look and see why this machine's doing it. Um, and today, doing that, can be a good friend of mine, Brian, you might remember him from another video that we did a, a while back with an interview. He repaired sewing machines for 13 years, so we're going to get in, him in here. This is his place. You can see his awesome shop here. This is the guy that I want fixing my sewing machine, so let's jump right in and uh, take a look. So we're taking a look at my buddy's wife's Singer machine. It's uh, gathering a bunch of thread on the bottom side when it stitches. And maybe, you know, we'll see that when Brian tries it out and starts to fix it. You know, Brian from the from a few videos ago, he's uh, he's the guy. He's been doing this for about 13 years. He did it professionally. And we'll see what, what the problem is. All right. Uh, Singer model 2263, huh? It's the simple. Yeah. Well... And it has a bobbin uh, system that I've never seen before. So. Yeah, this one has an oscillator on the bottom. Okay. Um, which is that kind of hook that 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 rotates back and forward. It does the the, the the mechanism that captures the thread doesn't make a full rotation. The last machine, the last machine, last video um, had a, a lay flat uh, bobbin that had a hook that rotated uh, completely around the hook, as, whereas this one just rotates it enough to catch the thread and pull it past the hook. And I'll show a little bit more about that. Okay. Well, um, well let's see here. So she had clumping on the bottom, right? Yeah, she was sewing some material. I tried it myself. It's a real typical problem. And I get a lot of viewers that, um, that write in, you know, with excessive threads on the bottom and whatnot. We kind of covered that in the last video a little bit. You're saying about, you know, look at the bottom case and and see if there's any damage on there. And then, yeah, look at your tensions and all, all that. I mean, so, and I see that, I would see this happen a lot. Uh, people would come in off the street a lot with a problem like this uh, back when I used to do this all the time. Um, and the first thing I look at it is, is I wouldn't even unthread the machine. I, I would just check it to see how everything's set up. First off, the way this is threaded, it looks like it's gonna catch, the handle is catching the thread. So, oh, yeah. unless so the threads underneath the handle, yeah, underneath the the handle. handle so down. unless you run this with it up, that's going to present a problem because it's going to pull off hard on one side. It's just not going to pull off evenly unless we're really lucky. Looks like there's a guide mist here too. But I really want to fix this handle issue. So we'll pull that off of there and we'll just swap it. Put it back on there. Handle on the um, down, we're just going to run it over the top. Actually. Yeah, yeah, we got that other guide. Um, the tension is set to two, so that that's usually low to me. I think this machine probably is four, especially since they give you these guidelines. Usually these lines in between the numbers are trying to give you the range, like, ah, oh, this is where you normally are. So we'll, we'll put it on four, which historically has been a typical number for a Singer machine. Um, uh, I would also say that the thread is not in the take up. Now some of this may have happened in transit. Okay, uh, well I feel tension because the foot is down and I'm pulling on the thread. Now I'm going to thread that take up lever. And um, normally you would do all this with the foot up, but in this case we're already in the tension so I can leave the foot down. Um, get it to its respective guides. I have a feeling this machine's going to run no problem. Let me just make sure the needle is in all the way. Boy, it's really cranked hard. They don't need to, they don't need to crank it that hard. Um, and there, that may indicate a problem, in fact. Uh, I mean, the needle is not visibly bent, but I would probably replace it. Typically, when I have a problem, I usually just, by default, replace the needle. Hmm. Um, and what I'm doing right now is, because that it was so crank, cranked so hard against the needle, I kind of want to check this screw Make sure the tip isn't deformed. We have some deformation on the, the tip um, where the needle is dented into it and it may be because it got cranked on or 
or maybe the needle was falling out, so they had to crank on it because of that. Um, but let's just get this screwed back in here. So flat to the back, and we'll tighten that on, finger tight, and maybe another eighth of a turn. It right, doesn't. Just a little snugging. You don't need too much. Um, okay. So the needle is in, it was incorrectly, it was inserted correctly before. Um, and now, I wonder if the threader works. No, I would say it does not, which is a shame. Maybe we can have a look at that. Get that in there. All right, lift up the foot. Tension seems to release okay, so that's a good sign. Uh, I'm gonna hold on the thread and give it one full rotation until the, the take-up lever comes to its upright topmost position and just past it. And it, it seems to pull up okay. So, so far so good. I think real quick before we sew on it though, I'm just gonna take a look at this hook. These, a lot, a lot of times these uh, oscillators, they have these little um, levers on, uh, that uh, at three and nine o'clock position that hold in this hook race. Uh, I would only do this if I if I was brave. I had some mechanical inclination, but uh, and then you can remove the the hook, um, which in this case is like a moon shape. The oscillators are always this shape. Um, and a lot of times I'll run my fingernail on the tip, just uh, I'm feeling for burrs, make sure it doesn't snag the thread um, or tear the thread. I'll also sometimes take like a small screwdriver and just run the edge and see if I can feel it with the screwdriver. This feels great though. Okay, so the hook point is really good. Um, I also like to take a look at the race. Th these are pretty common uh, cleaning techniques that anybody at home could probably do. Um, usually the biggest challenge is getting it back together, which is pretty easy once you know what you're doing. Um, this one looks really clean. It actually looks pretty well oiled. I see some oil in there. Normally what I would do is I would oil up in the race here where the hook sits um, which sits right in there like that um, often you get lint caught in there uh, you can get these little probes at the tool store real cheap you know you just get in there and scrape out the, 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 the lint that gets compacted in here um, this machine doesn't look like it's been used a tremendous amount so there's really very little lint um, so okay, so I'm gonna put the hook back in because the, the race looks clear um, and uh, the, the, the hook point looks good. So you just set it back in there. This is probably the trickiest part. Uh, you may have to lay the machine on its back to get this done. Um, so that sets in there. And of course the needle should be out of the way when you do this. Then you just wanna take that hook race, put it back in there. And it has a little notch on it. Most of them have some sort of a button or some some key that makes sure it fits in properly so you just kind of got to get it in there with your needle all the way up so the feeders are out of the way and everything and it should just pop right in there we go see that now it's in place there we go there we go should turn freely the machine should not bind it shouldn't be tight you shouldn't have to force anything at this point all right, so wonderful. We know that the hook is good. Um, so let's move on. Uh, looks like the bobbin is partially unthreaded, but again, I don't know if that happened while we were messing around or during transport or something like that. So I'll just make sure that's rethreaded. Um, there we go. It really feels pretty lax though. Yeah, that's really loose. That's really loose thread really loose tension so I'm going to just and that's probably why this machine was set to two they're trying to compensate for that in all likelihood so I'll take a small bobbin case screwdriver here and I'll just increase that tension a little bit hmm that's interesting here, let's, yeah. and this is not for the faint of heart hope ho hopefully this is set by a technician you don't have to worry about it but they do come loose sometimes you get lint in there Last, last video you were talking about your gram scale. Is this something that you would test with your gram scale? Uh, on, a, on a higher end machine, yeah. Okay. Usually you pull out the gram scale for a computerized machine, an embroidery machine, 
that is utterly dependent on this tension being absolutely accurate. Because some of these computerized machines where you hit your, your different, you dial your different stitches in even, not, it doesn't even have to be embroidery, you, you can select a different kind of applique stitch and it'll adjust all the tensions and the foot pressure for you and all those little things that you can do manually, it'll do for you. And, and when it comes to tensions that it's adjusting up top for you automatically, it is depending on this. So yeah, on those machines, we would pull out the grams gauge. On this, I can feel, you know. And, you know, one test is if you hold it and you yank it and it and it, and it down drops a down a little bit but then stops, you're probably there. Huh, you know. Good trick. That's a really good trick. Yeah. Thanks. So that, thanks for that. Yeah, that's a, it is good. Uh, now, of course, you may have to practice that because the bobbin will go flying around you a hundred times when you do it, but, but still, that's, that, is, that is one trick. Okay, so it pulled up no problem. I don't see a problem. It's gonna sew fine now. It's gonna sew. It's gonna sew fine, totally. Alright, let's just I got this scrap. I'm not even sure what it is. It's like a medium weight on um, uh, uh, cotton. It sounds good too. Turn up the stitch length a little bit. Uh, yeah. Look at that. It's not terrible. Well, that's much better than what it was. And actually, it looks like I could actually decrease the bottom tension just a hair. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and do that. Just... And again, you would not want to try to pull the bobbin case out with the needle down. Because the, because the in this kind of machine, the needle actually goes into the bobbin case by about a millimeter. If you look at the top of the bobbin case, they actually have a slot for the needle to clear. Pretty decent. I might actually want to bump it up a little bit on top. Because I don't want to go too far down below. This machine might have some slightly so so top tension. Yeah, I don't know. I think we're in business. I think we are too. I think that's amazing. Well, so there you have another episode of Burly So, folks. I hope everybody's having a great new year. I look forward to doing more videos in 2014. Uh, I want to thank Brian for helping us out with this video. And as always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. Happy New Year, everybody. I'm Purified, and this is Barely So.